Welcome to our Danger for DevOps webcast. Today we will be looking at our new extension for automatically creating changelog in DevOps. Before we do, let's get to an introduction. I'm today's presenter, Enes Palak, and I have been employed as a sales consultant at Simova for two and a half years. Max, uh, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, hello, my name is Max Krampe. I'm a marketing and partner manager for Simova for over three years now. And I will present the Change Shocks for DevOps tool live today. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to show you the benefits of our tool. What are we going to look at today? First of all, first of all, we will look at what Change Shocks actually are. When we will look at how Change Shock for DevOps works, the third item in our uh, on our agenda today is the live demo, in which we will see the seamless integration with different import options, the different output types, and the personalized configuration options. After that, we will also get to the packages and benefits. If you have any questions, we will clarify them at the very end in the Q&A session. But uh, what are change shocks anyway? All of us are familiar with change shock, at least when we look at the updates of our mobile phones. They show uh, which bugs have been fixed, which new features have been added, and a lot of information about the new uploaded software version. But we noted, noticed what, um, that it can be annoying to create change logs manually outside of Azure DevOps. That's why we created a way with change log for DevOps that allows us to create the change logs immediately from Azure DevOps and to even deploy them fully automatically. I will show you how this works on our next slide. We are fully integrated into your Azure DevOps environment. As soon as we solve and complete a work item in our DevOps, DevOps environment, we can create a change log with these release notes written. We can publish this change log as a markdown HTML and or PDF file. If we want to publish a file as HTML or markdown, we also have the option to automatically upload it to our repository via pipeline. I will now hand over to Max and I will take a look, or we will take a look at this in a live demo. Yeah, thank you, Enid, for the introduction. Um, let's jump right into an Azure DevOps environment. Here we are on the um, on the dashboard of our team webcast where we are working today. Myself, um, I am a developer in this team webcast, and I will be developing a new feature in the sprint number one. And I will be developing the new feature number one, which is still committed in our sprint number one. Let's pretend now I finished the um, development here and I want to set the status of my product backlog item to done. And I now get presented an error message that the system expects me to write a release note for this work item and the status of the work item is set to committed uh, again. This is a new functionality to prevent creating uh, or setting the status of a work item to done before change log text is written. Here we can see how our change logs for DevOps um, tool is integrated into the work items as there here is now a new tab called release note. And in this, I'm presented a complete HTML editor to edit my text um, regarding this new feature number one to tell my customers or my partners what this new feature number one is about and how this will impact my customers. I, as myself, have the open um, or the premium AI package of ChangeLogs for DevOps, so I have the option to write my change log um, through the AI dependent on the uh, change of description on the on the description on the work item. So I now click on create release node and the open AI will write a change log text for my um, work item here. This looks very promising, but I would like to get more details. So I tell the AI. A little bit more details, please. And the AI will now yeah, write a change log with more details based on the item description.
the AI finished writing the text. I think this is an awesome text and I say, OK, I want to take this over to my change log text. And now I'm able to save this work item and set the status to done. No new error message appears. The status is set to done and I'm finished with my work as a developer here. On the left hand side, we have a new tab called change logs for DevOps. And when we navigate into this tab, we will uh, we will now create a new so-called change log configuration where we can import um, different work items and create our release notes based on these imported work items. I will now create a new change log configuration for the sprint number one. At the version number here, which is in our example 1.1.0 and create my change log configuration. I jump right into it and on the left hand side we see that we have no work items imported. Uh, this is yeah, due to that it is recently created by me and I can now import work items to the change or configuration based on different options. First of all I can have I have the option to import by iteration. Um, so I select my team and the sprint. I can import by build, by pull request, by query or manually by adding the work item ID. In my uh, example today, I will choose the uh, iteration. I select my webcast team and the sprint number one. Click on import. I could now add even more work items that are not in sprint number one to this change of configuration, but I will not in this example. And now on the left hand side, we see our work items imported, important, uh, imported, sorted by parent and by work item type. This is uh, a configuration the product owner or the product manager um, set in advance for the release notes. But in this example, I now want to change the sequencing of the work items. And I would like to sequence additionally by area. So I can now select sequencing by work item area, activate this option, and I can now, I can now sort my areas i would like sample product number one at the top sample product two at the middle and sample product three at the bottom of my change log configuration we can now see that the um, items have been sequenced in another way and on the right hand side we have a direct preview of how our change log will look when we export it we have a table of content we have the different um, work items here we have the new feature number one we just uh, developed with the uh, open AI text and we have yeah a few more other work items that have been added. I now save my change our configuration and want to export it. Here I'm also repre uh, presented many export options um, for example on the file types we have a PDF markdown and HTML and um, the PDF files can only be downloaded to my client, but the Markdown and HTML files can also be uploaded to a, a JIT repository. In my example, I now want to publish to a repository and I select the Markdown file here and uh, select my repository, Team Webcast, select the branch and say I want to create a new file as these change logs have never been published before, so I create a new file here. After I click export, my change doc is now saved in our repository. When I move here on the left hand side to the repositories and to the file section, I can see in the team webcast that my change doc has been published here. And when I click the preview, we can see how this looks in markdown format um, yeah, on my repository. We are Simova also use this functionality to publish our change logs in the markdown format to a repository. And we do this to our Simova doc site. Um, here in this example, we can see the DMS by Simova um, extension for Business Central. And these versions, um, release versions, yeah, and the change logs for these release versions have also been automatically published by our change logs for DevOps tool um, via the pipeline to this repository. Back in the Azure environment, um, we now want to focus on different um, styling options for our change logs. 
So if you go to the general settings tabs, we have yeah, different configuration options. And if we move to the layout section, we can define what content and what style my change log yeah, will appear. So on the on the content section, we can uh, define what content we want to present. So for example, here on the cover, we want to present the title and the version number. We could also add um, other information here on the release notes. We could also add other variables here like the work item ID, for example, or um, other things. In the style section, we can also adjust our how our change lock will look in the end. We can adjust the size of our icon here, as I can do this right away. And this is how my change lock will appear later. We can also adjust how the OpenAI will write the change lock text. We have the um, predefined commands here, and we can see that um, we deliver different variables to the OpenAI, and based on that, the OpenAI will write the change log text. On the right hand side, we can also yeah, adjust how uh, the text will look in um, the change log configuration. Um, yeah, this should be familiar for everyone who is familiar with OpenAI. That was it from the live demonstration, and I would like to hand the word back to Ennis for the plans and pricing. Thank you, Max, uh, for this detailed live demo. Let's now move on to the packages and prices of ChangeLog for DevOps. We've <coughs> decided that our um, basic package is free for everyone to use. In this package, you have the option to create four ChangeLog configurations and download the ChangeLog as PDF and HTML. In the premium package, you get the freedom to configure, configure your ChangeLogs according to your wishes. You can create or configure your own designs, placeholders, layouts, and much more. After purchasing the premium version, you can also sort your work items in the change log according to parents, items, and areas. You also unlock the option to download the change log, um, the change logs as markdown and the additional release option published to Git repository. In our premium AI package, you have all the advantages as in the premium package, except that you also get the option of using OpenAI, as Max showed in his live demo. The subscription is user independent, um, and if you pay annually, you can save 5% 5, 5 on the invoice. In advance, you have the possibility to test the premium package for 30 days free of charge. Thank you. Um, for listening, if you have some questions um, after this webcast, um, you can go to our website, changelogsfordevops.com, and um, or you can ask uh, contact us via email or telephone. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Goodbye.